Good afternoon. It is Wednesday at two o'clock. That means it's Fast Facts and Features with me, the brand ambassador for Ethical Flooring LTD. And Kevin, I turned on the lights for you today. I strung up a bit of Christmas for you today. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you. It's I can see you, you did a fantastic job. It was it was a push of a button, unlike when you have to put up Christmas lights at your own house and ladders and, all, and staple guns and all the rest of that good stuff. So something a little a little more festive. Um, so we are wrapping up Green Products 101 for this month, um, being that it's the month of all things kind of green and red. And we're going to wrap it up with carpeting. And I know we've had over this past um, year, we've had the, the wrap for Nature's, what's the name of that? N Nature's Carpet. Yeah, Nature's Carpet, a fantastic uh, Fast Facts and Features interview about six or seven months ago. But what I'm interested in today for you to go into, and I know it is your background's different, so um, I think you're home now for the holidays with your family. I am, yeah. Um, what makes it a green product, like in the construction of it and the deconstruction of it back to source? So that's what I'm going to get you to cover. Sure. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to. So wool carpet, um, as the name implies, is made out of wool, which is sheep's hair, right? So um, it's a long time, probably as long as humanity has been around, uh, people have been making products uh, out of wool, out of out of the sheep hair and carpet, long, long, very long history, obviously making carpet out of it. Um, and that continues today into not just hand knotted or hand loomed area rugs. Everybody's familiar with wool and area rugs with lots of patterns and whatnot. And, but they do also do that on kind of a large scale um, industrial size where we make wall to wall carpet or it's called broadloom carpet out of wool. So yeah, the primary base material is, you know, is a renewable resource. We're used to talking about that with trees or renewable resource or the bark on the trees when we talked about cork flooring. You know, in this case, we're actually talking about an animal byproduct that uh, doesn't harm the animal, doesn't hurt the animal, doesn't end the life of the animal, um, and just becomes a regular rotation of growing hair and shaving the hair. So um, there's even whole nations that their economies are pretty integrated with the wool industry, uh, New Zealand being one of them, right? So, um, and there's all sorts of documentation you can go into about how the sheep are treated and and the whole, um, you know, it's not an abusive um, environment by any means. They're mostly living in open pastures until it's time to uh, to take their hair. So, so that that's, is the- that's gotta, that, Just to pause there for a second, that's gotta play into the quality of the wool when the when the sheep is allowed to graze and eat you know great um like out in the pasture or meadows and sub to that just as i keep a thought i swear guys i'm just like you out there when i hear kevin talking i know you've got the same kind of question that i have in my head is okay they shear the sheep i've watched that lots um you know baba black sheep we've all we've all watched that <laughs> video when we were a kid but now that wool how does it stay a green product? Like, cause I hear, like, I think of manufacturing, I think of chemicals and all the rest of that stuff, even though I start with a green product or this wool product. So how does it maintain its greenness? Yeah, that, that's a great point because, uh, you know, if you dig deep and you ask questions, uh, there is various ways that that fiber is then processed um, and before it ends up as a carpet on your, on your floor so and say even within nature's carpet and and most wool manufacturers or suppliers will they'll have a gradation almost of green as you can call it and mm -hmm. that is that is the level of additional processing or chemicals that have been either used or applied to the product um, before it ends up in the floor so one of the most obvious ones is has the carpet been dyed a mm -hmm. specific color right so right. dye is an introduction of a chemical to you know, sheep don't grow pink hair. Uh, so if you want a pink wool carpet, you know, you're going to have to dye it. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas there's a lot of natural wool carpets that are just as the sheep, um, you know, as the sheep grows it. And depending on where in the world and what species of sheep it is, you're going to get some, some variations in color. Um, so that point you're moving on down, you know, on down the line with a, with a fairly 
untouched or, or very natural uh, process. You know, obviously they're cleaning it and they're they're running it through the looms and they're making it ready into into thread. But you can actually make it without additional chemicals. Um, so one of the primary ones uh, people would ask about, you know, if they've had wool clothing, obviously is is um, moth. Mm -hmm. and we don't have a lot of moths in Vancouver I don't think you don't really run into them but certain parts of the world you could potentially have a lot and there is moth proofing with some manufacturers that is mm -hmm. applied so that's a question okay. to, that's a question to look into if that's of interest um, you know there's all sorts of documentation of what it is and what minuscule amounts it is and you know all of this type of information from is, is available um, but yeah, it's, there's, there's definitely a continuum and one of the biggest continuums in terms of the finished floor product, you know, is what type of backing is applied to it. So that's not something that anybody ever thinks about oh, unless you're a flooring professional, but most, um, backings on carpets are made out of, uh, out of latex, they're synthetic, right? Okay. And it's a petroleum based product. It's going to off gas VOCs. Uh, wool carpets have been known for quite some time to have been applied with a natural jute backing. Um, and jute comes from where? Um, it's a good question. It's either a plant or a tree of some kind, I'm assuming. Okay, okay. Is it a jute? Yeah, I can't remember if it's a tree or a plant, jute. Um, okay. But it's like a hemp type material. Um, okay. Natural, again, grown and easy to, to regrow. Um, and also you mentioned on the on the back side, you know, what is the deconstruction or the, the mm. final the final disposal of this product? Um, again, it, it seems to be the norm. Anything that is grown out of nature, out of the ground from an animal, uh, will decompose back into the ground um, in some form. It'll become dirt or soil or some sort of product that will actually help regrow the next generation of right. Uh, of plant or, or animal even. Um, that's the way nature works. And, you know, anytime you have a product that's made primarily out of natural components, this is going to be its, its end of life cycle. So if you have a product made of wool carpet and you have its backing is made out of jute, both of these in a landfill are going to disintegrate quite quickly. And first they'll become mush and then they'll become, you know, a dirt or a soil of some right. type. And eventually they'll, they'll just become part of the ground and, um you know ready to start again so yeah it's a really neat full life cycle okay. story on it so to kind of wrap this up because now, now i think i've got it in my home and i know wool carpet lasts for a long time we it does we discover yeah. that um with great care so how does one go about cleaning it to keep it a green product that you're not introducing something that's going to take away that green status in your house Great. Yeah, there's a couple of key points there. What first is like to hit on the longevity. Um, you know, when we're sharing with a client in the showroom, um, almost I'd say without qualification, a wool carpet is going to be your most durable, long lasting yarn mm. system. Um, there's no synthetic yarn that I'm aware of that that will surpass it in longevity or life expectancy. Um, but but that into that uh, assumes that you take care of it as in most things in life right if you have a right. nice dress or if i have a nice suit uh it's made out of a really fine material a nice material long lasting material if you abuse it it's not going to last past the first time you wear it out right. and and a carpet could potentially be the same thing right so um vacuuming it um as often as possible and sometimes without a beater bar being attached mm, uh, to it okay. so just straight suction that's something you'll want to check for your particular carpet uh, some vacuums today are so aggressive uh, with the beater bar in terms of the suction and the bristles that it'll actually start to pull the, the wool carpet out um, okay. and then beyond that is just what we call hot water extraction which is a, a fancy way of saying steam cleaning so no chemicals are applied to the product. This is a professional service, you know, that you should be doing around once a year or so, depending on where it is and what traffic it, it, it sees. You know, if it's a, a guest bedroom down in the basement that hardly ever gets used, no, you're not going to have to steam clean it once a year. But if it's your stairs, you know, in your main living area or your living room or your master bedroom, Yes, you should be getting it professionally steam cleaned uh, approximately once per year or as needed. Um, and then what that does is that it's just called, it, they're just basically running hot water through it. There's no additional chemicals, there's no sprays. 
if anyone tries to sell you sprays or scotch guards or anything like that you politely say no thank you um, and that goes for any carpet actually by the way okay. um, all you want to do is run hot water through the carpet and it pulls out all the dirt the soil the accumulation which is actually quite easy to do on a wool carpet because wool on a microscopic level has kind of like a scale almost like an right. armadillo back mm -hmm. it's almost like an armadillo scales around each individual fiber so the the soil will actually slide off the yarn almost and and you know it'll get vacuumed up when you vacuum but for anything that happened to accumulate mm -hmm. uh the hot water extraction will will pull that out so that's oh, your yeah great great uh information um i just envision you know you watch the movies or television shows and you see all these you know people using bubbles and chemicals and soaps and stuff like that on your floor and that's good advice and hey hot water um it's all you need yeah is, is, is plentiful well wow what a great month of green products i think we didn't greenwash over anything we gave no. the facts about all these different products that you do um sell at ethical and each one has its own unique place in your house to uh to make sure that you you know increase the value of your home so we wrap this up kevin with it is christmas coming up and new year's can you please tell everybody what your holiday hours are over the next kind of 10 days please yeah it's uh it's spotty just the way that things happen to fall so you know christmas eve christmas day boxing day and the day after so that's the 24th to the 27th we're closed um, okay. And then it's the same idea surrounding New Year's. New Year's also falls on a Saturday, so uh, we'll be closed the Saturday, Sunday, and then the Monday to give everybody their statutory holiday off that uh, they didn't get on the Saturday. So, yeah, Perfect. we're big. We're big with giving our employees uh, time off and all of their due holidays, and they work exceptionally hard. And you know, we want them to to be humans and have lives as well. So. Uh, you can always check with us or I've updated on our Google listing all of the okay. business hours. So on Google Maps or on Google, you can uh, always see whether we're open or not. Perfect. So it's a good time in those four days to maybe catch up on some of these uh, fast facts and features uh, that Kevin and I have done over this last year. Well, Kevin, from my decorated home, I wish you, Tanya, your lovely daughters, a very Merry Christmas and your, fam and your extended family as well. And we'll be back uh, in the first week of January. And stay tuned. We're not quite sure what we're going to be talking about, but it's definitely going to be a fast facts of features about the flooring industry. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Jeanette. Merry Christmas.